Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create this triggered text effects that, that could have a lot of application in video games. And I'm just going to show you real quick how it works. You hit play and here is our player and I hit W and with the mouse I walk over to this box, which is actually be, has a box collision on it. It's going to get triggered. And if I hit the letter E, I'm going to see a text message. The box is going to go away like I collected it but technically it's just being destroyed. And if I hit E, you see the message, and then it goes away after three seconds. And that's that. I could put more boxes here if I wanted, but I just wanted to show you what we're gonna be creating. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna escape, and I'm just gonna close out of this, and we're gonna start from scratch. So I plan to be doing a lot more videos on Unreal Engine. I've done a few already. I think I've done 10. So here we are. We're going to go into games. We're going to go into third person. I've done this a few times today already. So I'm going to call this triggered underscore text. I'll call it 10 because I've, like I said, at 19, I've done a few of them. It builds a project. It takes a few minutes. Very excited about Unreal Engine. It's just a lot to learn. And visual scripting, although it's easier than computer language, is still a lot to it. So here's our scene. I'm just hitting the scroll wheel. And then I'm hitting the right button. And then I'm hitting the middle mouse button, and then it's coming straight down. So that's kind of our scene that we got right like that. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is create a display. And that's going to be created by, we're essentially coding it, but we're using visual script language. We're going to do it in what's called a blueprint class. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click user interface widget blueprint so this is technically a blueprint so what we're going to call it what it is so it's a display and then i'm going to put bp so i know it's a blueprint and i did it i created it so then the next thing we do is double click it's going to take us into this it no you notice it opens up as a separate window all you got to do is click and drag this up here and dock it so that it's real easy to access the first thing we need is a canvas so come up here in the upper left and we're just going to type in canvas this drag that if you click here and drag it's gonna you can see different sizes we'll just make this 1920 by 1080 the second thing we're going to need is what's called a size box and this is going to limit the size of our text and you can click on it and drag it down here now notice when I do it it's indented here and that means it's a child of this so wherever this goes this goes and it's right up here on the Control. I can click and drag it and put it wherever I want. There's handles here and I can size it. So this is what all the box will, within which our text will actually be displayed. We can also control this numerically over here. If I click, I can type in 700 and down here I can type in 300. While we're here, we might as well type in here 700 and down here min desired height 300. And I believe that's all we need to do for that. Now we need our text, so come back over here, type in text. There it is, drag it right here, and you see it, everything's inside of everything else. Here, we can come over here, horizontal alignment, align it horizontally, align it vertically. There's other adjustments you can make here. The one thing that we need to do is, so we need to put on auto wrap. And here we tell it at what point to start auto wrapping, and we can say 690. And then the last thing we do, and the, probably the most important thing, is we need to create a variable that's going to create a string into which we'll actually put our text. So then when we open up Unreal, we can actually type in what we want the message box to say. So that's going to be held in a variable. So we're going to go click Bind, Create Binding. And if we right-click here, we can create our variable. So right-click, Promote to Variable. And I can just drag this down so you can see it more clearly. And over here, we can get a, give it a name. And we can call it what it is. And it's... Uh, text input and there's that and as far as I know we're done so we just go compile and save and basically we've created our display so we're gonna jump back in here on the third person map we're gonna right click we're gonna go create a blueprint and an actor an actor is basically anything but this happens to be a blueprint and we're gonna call this cube maker because that's basically what it is underscore BP, so we know it's a blueprint and this is where most of our work will be and this is where most of this tutorial will be spent so you know go get yourself a drink or something <laughs> 
Hopefully this will take too long. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Okay, so the first thing we need is a cube. So we're gonna come over here to add and click cube. And this cube, if I hit the scroll wheel, I can put it back, push it back. Basically it's a visual representation of our trigger. It could be anything. It could be a mushroom, uh, anything really. It just happens to be a cube. And of course there's things over here you can do to it, change it if you wanted to, have it be something other than a cube. Then we need the actual trigger, which is gonna be a box collider. So we come in here and we type in box, oops, box collision. Now you notice when I did that, it it kind of made it a child of the cube, but these can be on the same level. So if we click and drag box into cube, they're on the same level now. Sometimes it's important that it be a child. In this case, it doesn't matter. The one thing we need to do though, is we need to make the box as big as the cube. Otherwise the trigger is actually hidden inside the box. So we gotta just scale her up. And you see it come out of the box right there. You don't actually see the collider, you just see the cube. While we're doing this, of course, we can see the, uh, the collider. We want the collider to be bigger than the cube because we want the Android or whatever it is to trigger, to set the trigger. Okay, so now we got that done. Now we're gonna come over into the, I don't think there's anything else I have to do here. Okay, and then go into event graph. And now we can left click and drag and select these things because we don't need them. And then we wanna click on our box. And now we, if we scroll down over here on the right side, we've got some choices here. We've got on component, begin on component. And this is basically, you can think of it as the trigger for the trigger. That closed, so I gotta click on the box again. And this is like the, the on switch and the off switch for the trigger itself, these two things here. There's a lot involved with this. I actually have some notes, so I have to actually just go back and look at my notes for a minute here. So from here, we're gonna click and drag, left click and drag out, and we can search for cast to third person. I did a whole video about what cast to means to me. It's kind of complicated, but basically it's like you're creating a two-way interchange between one functionality and another functionality. So one function you could say is inheriting some attributes from a more generic function and the more generic function actually has access to the more specific. So you can think of it like animal and dog, like a dog has access to some of the attributes of an animal, but not all animals are dogs. Like a, not all animals bark. So that's, it's kind of confusing, but I'll put a link to the video in the description, but we're casting to right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click and uh, duplicate this and then we're going to drag this down here and we're going to wire it up the same way white into white and other actor into object okay and this is just the very beginning there's a lot of steps still to go from right here we're going to drag out and we're going to type in enable input from here we're going to call up the player controller so we can just get player controllers right there and then we're gonna drag this, oops, and right click and uh, disable input. Once this part is created, we you could think of this as kind of initialization. And once this is done, this would, you know, we're kind of done here with this. We don't really need to see it. And we do start running out of real estate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this just to, and then I'm gonna right click and push all this to the side because we really don't need to see it anymore. Just make sure, oops, everything's hooked up. No, oops, I didn't hook up. Now, one thing to note is the white is kind of like the flow of the program. So it follows this pathway. It's kind of like the pathway of the program. It's kind of like if this, then this, and it's kind of the white moves the everything along. So if I right click, I can push all this to the side because I don't need to see it anymore. Now I can go back into my notes and this is a part I got, it's easy to get tripped up on. There's some stuff. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our widget. And it was kind of misleading because we've already created it. We're just, uh, we're gonna right click here and type in create widget. It's right here. 
One thing that's interesting about this program is that sometimes it doesn't really give you an error when you're doing this stuff, but what it will do is things won't be available. So you'll be looking for something and it's not there when you left click and drag, you, you search for it and you can't find it. That's your first signal that you've done something wrong. Let me show you real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. So what we're looking for is we're looking for that variable that we created. So it's called set a text input, I believe. But look, it's nowhere to be found, right? So then you start thinking, oh, what the hell, this this tutorial sucks. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This is jacked up. No, no, we just, we, we messed up. So before we can find set, we have to set our class here. So we set it to display here. Now watch if I click and drag out and go set text input. There it is, see? That's how the whole thing works. Like you, if you can't find something, like if you're looking for set text input, I can't find it. It means I've done something wrong. So you're not gonna get an error, but what you're gonna get is you're not gonna be able to find what you're looking for. That's your first clue that you did something wrong. You missed a step, in my case, mine. So now we're gonna uh, click on this and promote to variable. And basically, I just wanna say this isn't probably the proper language. We're variableizing this. So once we have our variable, we can come over here and we're gonna go ahead and click this and this. And what this is gonna do is this, this is gonna make it so that when we are running the, before we run the game, I can actually type what I want the cubes, the text to be. And I can drag as many cubes as I want into the, into the game. Each time I do that, I can, I can say what I can actually on the fly input what I want the cube to say, which is, which is pretty darn cool. So that's what this is doing right here. We're in a sense initializing the variable. That's how I, that's kind of how I look at it. So when you see that four thing, that means you can drag all this. So I keep dragging this way because because we start running out of real estate here pretty soon. Now here's our next. I'll make sure we get drag target into target two. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to need, I'm just looking at my notes here, is a gate, which kind of acts like just as it says is kind of as a switch. So from here we're going to drag off and go to gate, and there it is. Now, you notice it's hooked up already. I don't want it hooked up, so I can right click and break. I don't want to break all of them. Let's see, here we sit. Break link to that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to drag set into open, and then I want to drag disable input into close. And if you don't like these lines running through, if you double click, you can create these things and just, you know, make it a little neater, make the lines a little clearer. And then what I want to do is I want to drag my box and my cube on here. And if I click here, I want to destroy these. So once we, you'll see the box disappear and it makes it look like I'm collecting it, but I'm not collecting it. I'm just making it disappear. So we're going to go destroy component here and that goes into this we're going to do the same for the this too do both of them and then let's see our program flow so our program is going to go from the gate into destroy component so there's all that see how we start running out of real estate here it starts getting kind of messy and you start wondering, should I have just learned how to code? Okay, now we're gonna add the viewport. Now look, if I tried to drag from here, here's what I was talking about earlier. And I typed in add to viewport, I don't see it, right? It's not popping up. So that tells me I'm doing something wrong. That's the only message that I'm really gonna get that I'm doing something wrong. And so, oh wait, there's one more thing I forgot to add is, when you come up to the box, we're going to press a letter and it's gonna make the text appear. And to trigger that, I just need to right click here and we need a keyboard event. So we're gonna type in keyboard and we're looking for the letter E. We're just gonna do it for the letter E and there it is. So when we press it, it's gonna make, it's gonna activate this fl workflow here. There we go. We're, we're about there. We got just a few more minutes to go. It's a little bit, but 
You may have to do this a couple of times. So where were we? Oh, we didn't find it here. But if we click and drag out from here and right click and I look for add to viewport, I can find it because that is a functionality that I'm having from my my widget creation. So I can actually, once we make uh, it uh, disappear, we can uh, bring it, bring it, bring, uh, bring things back. So add to viewport and let's see, what are we going to do now? So the workflow is we're going to go from destroy widget back into here. And am I missing anything? I got to check here. Uh, 914. We're almost done. So it's going to pop back up on the screen. And then we're, we want it there. We want there to be a, a delay. So from the here, because this line is coming in pretty sloppy, I'm going to double click and pull this down. So this will, we're going to need this in a little bit here. Destroy component, add to viewpoint. Our text is going to pop up. And then we, how long do we want it to be on the screen? We're going to type in a delay. Can I get it from there? Yep. And so we'll, let's say we want the text on the screen for three seconds. We want it to go away. We want everything to go away. We want, uh, so from here, we're going to left click out. Oops, let me drag over this way. Left click out and remove from parent. We'll just take, we'll get, remove everything from the, the scene. So there's, it'll look like we collected it, but everything will be completely gone. Now to follow our workflow, we're going to go from the delay to the remove from parent. And then we're going to finally kill everything. Uh, and so we're going to left click out here and just go destroy actor. Now, if you don't fully understand everything that we've kind of done here, just watch the video again. I'm right clicking to do that. There's a lot to it, right? I mean, it's a lot of lot logical gates and stuff. It, the other option would be typing all this in code. So this is probably better. And the fact that they thought all this out is just kind of mind boggling. So my only question is, will this, do you think this will work? <laughs> so let's go ahead and compile it and save it. I have no idea. So let's, here's our game. So here's our cube maker. So here we do, we just drag this on to the stage. And then here, remember we had text input, our variable. So I said, I could put, hi, how's it going? Then I can drag another box over here change my view and you just drag it away over here right there look I can put whatever this one wants to say okay and then I'll do just one more now what will happen is you save this game and you come back and add more boxes these boxes will still be there so let's hit play and see if the darn thing works here's my character orbiting around I hit W come to the box I should collide hit E ah why are blueprints hard to learn it looks like I collected the box but it's actually been destroyed E hi how's it going <laughs> and this one what are you looking for here <laughs> and that's it that is it my friends I hope you found this helpful. This is some functionality that I'm sure will come in very, very, very handy. Oops, I didn't make it. So anyway, take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.